In this artist talk presented by William May Gallery, I will be discussing some of my explorations and findings within the realm of visual art from January 2020 through September 2020. Let me preface this by saying I am disabled. I use a medical alert service dog to mitigate the symptoms I experience on a daily basis as a result of complex post-traumatic stress disorder. I have also been diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome and orthostatic intolerance. At its worst, I am unable to stand without aid, walk up the stairs, and most frightening to me, unable to create art. In January of 2020, I began to experience a dramatic increase of symptoms, sending my overall physical health into a rapid decline and forcing modifications on my practice so that I might be able to continue work in my current state. At the start of 2020, I began allowing my medical alert service dog, Coco, to participate in the production process of some of my larger scaled installations. This involved having her perform a variety of service dog tasks as we both walked on top of a bed of dirt. I only use natural materials when I involve Coco in the making process, things like wood, dirt, sand, and water. I view these works as a form of self-portraiture that has allowed for a close examination of the ways in which my body interacts with my extended self, my service dog. This is only the beginning stages of the Dirt Box series. I am still unsure of how it will develop or the space in which the dirt piles will be installed. I have always made large-scale work, sometimes creating paintings as tall as 12 feet. Art making like this has been made difficult as a result of the extreme chronic fatigue. I either require help from multiple people, for example, the dirt boxes I create with Coco are made with my instructions but not my physical hands, or I'll build custom-made tools that help me conserve energy while still allowing me to create on a large scale. None of these tools are meant to be permanent. I don't plan them out and I don't use high quality materials to build them. My health fluctuates and therefore so do my medical needs. Upon entering the studio, I assess my energy level. If it's low, I'll grab a rod, tape, water, and mark making tools and build a custom instrument on the spot. Like all aspects of my art practice, building custom tools is impromptu. I used to view my need for adaptive art making as a limitation, another negative due to my disability. However, I have since come to embrace it. The chronic fatigue has forced me to view my practice in ways I wouldn't have before. In March of 2020, as my health continued to worsen, my small hometown in Illinois began to experience the ramifications of COVID-19 firsthand. I immediately began to document the pandemic through photographic, painted, and written works. It was crucial to me that this historic period be documented through the lens of a disabled individual. All too often, the perspectives of minority groups are written out of history, creating an inaccurate account. As I witnessed my town go from denial to high levels of anxiety, supplies being hoarded, riots in the capital, I began to feel that while documentation of one disabled person's life was important, my disabled community was dying around me. My voice was archived, but theirs was not. It was at the same time that DISART, a disability arts and cultural organization with a global reputation, commissioned me for a collaboration on disability and COVID-19. The goal of this public project was simple. We wanted to address the mainstream news outlets who were wrongfully labeling disabled people as disposable, while simultaneously uniting and giving voice to the disabled community. During a brainstorming session, I wrote the first My Dearest Friends poem, which reads, My dearest friends, we mustn't let this be forgotten, the time the world gained perspective on a small portion of our struggles. We must make sure that this moment goes down in history so that we can build a better world, a more accessible world, a world for everyone, a world for us. Oakley. Within this poem, I begged my disabled community not to forget the maltreatments we experienced during the pandemic. For those with pre-existing conditions, the influx of new patients needing treatment for COVID meant that our medical needs were ignored in the name of triage. This initial poem became the foundation for what is now known as the My Dearest Friends Project, a disability-led grassroots public project that amplifies marginalized voices and documents the disabled community's collective experience with the COVID-19 pandemic. Documented on Instagram, Facebook, and the DisArt website, the Dearest Friends Project consists of over 270 submissions written by disabled individuals and allies. Contributors have sent written recounts through email and handwritten letters, and I, in return, created a custom illustration to go along with each written work. Eventually, through this collaboration, 
we created a physical archive of the disabled experience during the pandemic. Another submission reads, My dearest friends, when this is over, and it will be some day for some people, how might I face the people who didn't care, those who didn't wear masks, who ate out at restaurants as soon as they reopened, who went to clubs and malls and a million other places? How can I move through the world knowing how many people were willing to let me and so many others die? Samir. In 2020, I have learned the importance of personal documentation, but also the powerful influence of community-based art. I found great comfort in this project and know that others have as well. There's something about knowing you're not alone, that these fears and anxieties surrounding COVID are felt even by the strongest among us. I've watched this art not only gave voice to the disabled community during these historic times, but also managed to connect and bring growth to a community largely impacted by COVID-19.